Yo, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to a brand new video. I'm in Orlando, Florida at the moment. Just going for a morning swim here. Uh, really nice weather. In this video, we'll be learning how to invoice SNMA clients. So if you guys have not signed your first ever client yet, then this is a great video to watch just to prepare you. So when you actually do get your first client, then you just know straight away what to do with the invoicing and actually how to collect payments. So let's dive into the laptop. I'm just gonna finish my swim real quick. So I'll meet you guys in the room. By the way, guys, Wi-Fi Money Masterclass has now extended the spots to 65. We have currently 45 people on the wait list and I'm about to send a Calendly link to all of you guys who have signed up for a qualifying call with me. So that's just to see if you're a good fit and if I actually see potential. So do sign up for the waitlist if you want to take your agency to the next level and scale it to six figures per month plus. What's up guys? Hope you guys enjoyed that little pool clip there. Welcome back to a brand new video. If you guys are new here, I am Hugo. I'm a seven figure dropshipper and a six figure per month SMMA owner. I make videos about dropshipping, SMMA, online business and how to become a great business owner. So if you guys are interested in that or if that even sounds like you, drop me a subscribe and a like in this video. I really appreciate your support. So in this video, we'll be talking about how to actually invoice and charge your clients for SMMA. So let's dive right in and let's talk about these details. So one thing that a lot of agency owners uh, do incorrectly when they're charging their clients is that there are a lot of back and forths for every single charge. So what do I mean by this? So let's say you're charging your client for the first time and you send them an invoice, you send them a contract, they actually settle it. That's all good. But let's say one month later when you have to charge them again, let's say you sign them on for six to 12 months. Next month, let's say you have to charge them again and you have to send them another invoice. But let's say, you know, they have a lot of stuff to do. They have to worry about, you know, scaling the business, of <laughs> sourcing their products, uh, you know, dealing with employees. It's very difficult sometimes and actually their inbox might be flooded. So sending them invoice every single month and asking them to pay might not be the best decision. So how would you guys compensate for that? Well, so for me, I use Stripe to invoice all my clients. It's very simple. They do charge uh, you know, a certain fee that takes away from your monthly retainers, but I think it's just really easy to use and very seamless. Uh, less worry about everything. I just get my bank account deposits every single month. It's very, it's very comfortable that way. So I recommend that you guys use Stripe. I know people who use Simply Invoices to do that as well, but I think they do work through Stripe. So I'm not quite sure about that, but you guys should be setting up subscriptions on your Stripe account because subscriptions are different from one-time payment link. Just like the app store, you know, you get charged automatically and billed automatically by the end of every single month, but using a subscription just causes less friction for the client to actually pay your invoice. So setting up a subscription on Stripe is the first step that you guys need to be doing. If you guys wanna have a seamless invoicing system and automate that process so you don't have to worry about, you know, uh, you know, calculating how much you need to charge and stuff like that. One more thing about subscriptions is that if you guys do do a retainer plus a performance deal, then you guys will need to set the subscription to your retainer. And by the end of every single month, just send them an extra invoice for the performance fee. And that is what I do. And also a very quick sales tip right now is that when you guys are on sales calls and you guys are closing your clients or they're asking about the price of your service or your offer and you guys are giving them the price outline and they're like, oh, okay, I need to think about it or I need to talk to my wife or uh, I need to talk to my business partner or you know, all these BS excuses and, and objections. You need to handle those objections clearly and actually make sure that they're comfortable and they're informed about your offer and your service. And then you make sure that they pay on the call, make sure that they settle the invoice on the call. So this is super crucial because if they don't settle that on the call, then they're never going to settle it. So let's say if they're like, okay, um, yo, Hugo, like after the call, I will sell the invoice and then, uh, you know, get me on boarded. It's all good. You know, I love your offer, love your service. And I'm like, okay, um, but is there any reason why we can't settle the payment at the moment? Because, you know, the faster we get onboarded, the faster we can get you results and faster we can actually start work. And then they'll be like, oh, okay, then let's settle the, let's settle the invoice now. Or they could be like, ah, oh, nah, I don't have my credit card at the moment. I need to, you know, go back to my car and get it. Then there's still something missing that you maybe haven't covered in the sales call. So you might be like, okay, so this actually happens to me all the time. You know, when I get on sales calls with clients, they tell me, you know, um, I, I might not be the, the best fit, even though they seem very inclined to go forward with the, with the service. Most of the time when I deal with these sales calls, um, 
most of these clients aren't a great fit. Like I'm just gonna be completely transparent with you. You know, most of these clients are just not the best best of fits. And that's when I actually let them know uh, we, we might not be the best fit, best of luck for you and your business and we move on. But in your case, you're literally the perfect fit. So it's in my best interest to actually work with you. And I think clients like you will generate the best results because you're so inclined and very eager to generate results. And that's why we actually settled the payment on the call because the faster we get done with everything, the faster we can generate your results. So all in all guys, if the prospect does not settle the invoice on the call, I do not even categorize that as a lead. I do not even categorize that as a, you know, a client, a paying client. I used to do that all the time when a prospect gets off the call and um, before the call, they're like, okay, I'll settle the invoice straight after the call. And I do the best of my ability to actually recapture those prospects to make them into paying clients. And I still follow up with them but they're not actual paying clients. So if you wanna secure that, make sure that you guys close and make sure that they pay and settle the invoice on the call. So basically what I usually say before they actually make the payment is that I say, so please give me your first and last name, your business address. Once that's settled, we can get you onboarded. We can get your ads. If you're doing ad service delivery or if you're doing email marketing, we can say oh, we can get your campaigns and flows up and running ASAP. So it's generally pretty easy to convince uh, prospects to actually sell the invoice if you give them a strong enough advantage to do so. And in that case is that they can get results faster. So make sure that you guys do state the benefit of invoicing the contract so the client is more eager to go through with it. And also another thing to do with invoicing is that never do bank transfers or bank wires because they're just such a hassle to do. You know, you need the SWIFT code and all that, everything like it's very annoying. I used to do that for clients in China because they couldn't, you know, do Stripe. So make sure that you guys do stick with those Stripe subscriptions. And usually when the clients are actually paying the invoice Invoice. They usually take you know anywhere from five to 20 minutes to settle that invoice depending on where their card is. So if their card is right next to them, it's usually pretty quick. What I usually do is I just sit there and wait for them to actually settle the invoice. I don't even say anything. Um, I'm just like, okay, uh, I don't even say anything. I don't ask questions on how is it going and stuff. I just sit there and wait for them to settle the invoice. And if they have any questions during that period, if they have any hesitation, make sure that you guys are ready to answer or you know deal with any objections that they have. Because I know that the second that you know that the call ends, they're just gonna you know uh, close that tab um, and not, actually not pay the invoice and say, oh, you know, I'll do that later. Okay, so make sure that you guys stick with them throughout the call and make sure that they're focused on making the payment. Yeah, guys, so I hope you guys enjoyed this invoicing tutorial. If you found any sort of value in this video, please drop a like, a comment, and do subscribe to my channel if you want more of these coming your way.